Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to calculate resonance frequency for series RLC circuits. And resonance occurs, and a series RLC circuit occurs when the capacitive and the inductive reactances are equal to each other. So we could simply write that down as just say that the capacitive and the inductive reactances are equal. We can show that graphically in this graph which has a graph of the reactances, both the inductive and the capacitive, with respect to the frequency. As you know, the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency. The inductive reactance is directly proportional to the frequency. So at some point for a given circuit, those two values are going to be equal to each other, and that occurs where those two curves intersect. And that means that the inductive and the capacitive reactance will be equal, and that occurs right there, and that will be for a given frequency in our circuit when the capacitive and the inductive reactances are equal for a single frequency. Now we can also show that with our phasor diagram. You know we have our phasor diagram, we have the capacitive reactance on the negative x-axis, the inductive reactance on the positive x-axis, and we want to figure out the impedance, we add up those values. Well, when we add those two up, they're going to cancel each other out. And that means that the impedance is simply going to be equal to the resistance of our circuit. All right, now let's go and see how we calculate the resonance frequency. We're going to set the inductive reactance and the capacitive reactants equal to each other. Inductive reactance is equal to two times pi times the frequency times the inductance of the inductor. Capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance of the capacitor. These two frequencies are obviously the same frequency. So first thing we're going to do to solve for that frequency is multiply both sides of the equation by f. That gives us 2 pi f squared l equals 1 over 2 pi c. Now I'm going to divide both, of the equation, both sides of the equation by 2 pi l. That gives me that f squared, the frequency squared, is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared LC. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. That's going to leave me with the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root LC. If I take the square root of both sides, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of pi squared is pi, and I'm left with the square root of LC like that. So this is the equation we use to calculate the resonance frequency if we want our answer to be in hertz. If we want our answer to be in radians, then this is the equation that we use. Omega, the angular frequency, is equal to 1 over the square root of LC like that. So we can use either equation depending on whether we want our answer in hertz or in radians. Okay, now let's go through and do an example. These are the values I had from the previous videos I made on RLC circuits. We have an inductor which, with an inductance of 750 millihenries, a capacitor with a capacitance of 15 microfarads. I'm simply going to plug my values in for the frequency. It's 1 over 2 pi times the square root of 750 times 10 to the minus 3 millihenries, 15 times 10 to the minus 6 microfarads, and I just get that my resonance frequency for that circuit with that capacitance and that inductance would be set 400, 400, 47.5 hertz, okay? Now, I like to just go through and check to make sure that the capacitive and the inductive reactances will be equal for that value. So I'm just going to plug my values in for the capacitive reactance, and I get 1 over, and that gives me 224 ohms. We'll do the same thing for the inductive reactants, and that also gives me 224 ohms. And I can see that those two values are equal to each other, opposite in magnitude. They would be this would be minus, no, this would be a minus, this would be a plus. Add them up, and you get zero, as we can show on our phasor diagram like that. Okay? In that case, when I add them up, then the sum of the capacitive and the inductive reactants would be zero. Of course, I would have no phase angle. If I calculate the impedance, x is zero, 
So the square root of zero is zero, obviously. Then I get the square root of r squared is r, and the impedance would be equal to the re resistance of the circuit, which in the, in the example side I've used is 150 ohms, okay? And that's uh, how we would draw the impedance vector if you wanted to draw that on there. Okay, now let's see. The next thing we're going to do is that's it, okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching.